What's going on YouTube? Bladezilla here and today we are checking out a very very cool very special limited edition knife uh, well it's a custom division knife but very limited in quantity and availability and we were just lucky enough to have this one float by my grubby little mitts. So this guy is a Shirogoroff Stellar CD Custom Division SR which stands for Sprint Run. And in this case, it uh, is kind of defined as having a real cool blade that's on it. So the standard Stellar uh, CDs have an M398 blade, I believe, while the Sprint Run gets a real cool uh, Damasteel blade. And as I'm watching this on my little screen, it's really fighting me with the shiny bits, so hopefully the, the darkness kind of uh, doesn't hang around too long here. Anyway, so let's talk about this knife, let's do some comparables. Um, first and foremost, as I always discuss, this is a casual conversation, I'm not going into excruciating detail about every last little thing and angle this, angle that, blah blah blah. I wanted to show you the knife, and uh, hopefully if you're like me, you're able to fall in love with it a little bit and uh, put it on that list. Um, also, I have noted that I don't say this often enough, but check out bladezilla.ca, where a lot of the knives that are featured on this channel are actually up for sale. And um, all of them are new. In rare cases, I will actually comment and say they're not new, but for the most part, everything on the site is brand new, unless otherwise noted. So let's get into the detail. The Stellar SR CD. So. What is it? What does it compare to? What is it all about? And uh, should you check it out? The answer is yes to all of this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so in this in this particular case, uh, the Sprint Run variety, there's 30 of these. Okay, they made 30, and within that 30, uh, in the Sprint Run variety. They only made 15 of this blade style. Now there's two different versions. I believe uh, there's this one, and I think one's called Ladder, if that makes sense, like a ladder damage steel. Um, and there's 15 each. So in this case, this knife is limited. This knife is limited to 15, and the other version, 15 as well. So very rare, uh, very difficult knife to track down, especially in this kind of condition. But, as you probably know, uh, Shirogoroffs in the custom line don't tend to show a lot of use, um, just because they're very expensive now. Um, something like this on the open market is probably probably 4000 plus, uh, and this is filmed in 2023 uh, for reference, but it's probably in that range right now, maybe up to 4500 currently, uh, depending on the buyer and the seller, but uh, easily you can get that. So let's talk about this. So the Stellar fits in the lineup kind of in the um, mid-size range as, uh, as we've seen on other knives. Um, and I'll zoom this guy out here and kind of do a size comparison with the, uh, the standard tape measure to show you guys what we're talking about, but we should know. We should know by now. Uh, overall length, you're coming in at about eight and a quarter, I would say, depending on how good your eyes are. Uh, sharpened blade, or just overall blade length, let's just go with that. Three and three quarter, maybe uh, you could probably argue a little bit longer, but to the end of the handle you're at three and three quarter, something like that. 3.6 is probably the sharpened, if I were guessing. Now how does that look in terms of the Shirogoroff range? Well, let's take a look at what that would be comparatively. So. We've got our Neon Zero, our standard beautiful Neon Zero is going to be your small end, and I'm going to make sure not to bump any of these here. Um, from Neon, Neon Zero, Neon NL, they're all kind of the same size, basically the same size. They're actually a slight variance between NL and Zero, believe it or not. We go into the Stellar, which is the standard production size as well, and then from there we would go into our F95. In this case, just for size comparison, let's use another custom division knife. This is the Magnetic, 
and let's try to line these pivots up so you can kind of see the sizes the best possible and then so that's your full size 95 mil blade and then from there we go into the 111 which I do not have a custom division version of but there's a standard 111 for size so as you can see small medium large extra large or I'll be honest, the Neon's such a good EDC, it's not really a small, it's more of a small medium or medium. This is kind of a medium large-ish. This is a large, and this would be your extra large. So, lots of size variants. And I'm excited to compare this guy with a couple other super, super cool knives. Uh, but I want to make sure that I don't bump any of these, because these are personal collection knives, and I like to keep them mint-mint. Uh, in terms of other Shergroth stuff that we maybe want to take a look at that I have available right now, we could do an F95 T. We can do a F3 Aquatic, because that would be kind of fun. Looks great. From this angle, it's going to look way bigger because of the angle of the camera. But as we can see here, if I put this all of a sudden above, well, lo and behold, it doesn't look so massive anymore. Isn't that funny? So let me do that, and uh, you know what, just because I have one of these as well, which is a, another video that I'll probably be having come up here sooner than later, if you watch the channel, a new F3 uh, outdoor model, which is super, super cool. Uh, what's so cool about this is actually there's no pocket clip on that scale, which is awesome. And then if we want to compare it with a Hattie as well, uh, there's your F95 Hattie. Uh, basically, which uh, I think I'm down to my last one of those. They are selling like hotcakes. So there we go. There's your basic comparison and uh, discussion on uh, comparables uh, in the Sheer Goroff range. And then if we want to get into the standard large Sabenza and small Sabenza, we can do that. So there's your large and your small will appear massively different size because it's on the angle of the camera. So there's your small, there's your large, and then your uh, stellar, beautiful stellar in the middle. So that should be a pretty good reference point. Now let's overview of the knife. So let's put that away before I cut myself. So who's this knife for? Well, it's obviously for the collector, someone who really appreciates the fine detail of the knife. And, uh, you know, it's something that it's, it's hard to appreciate unless you have one in your hand. Uh, feel the heft of it, feel the weight as you swing the flipper tab out. Uh, as we know, it is a liner lock compared to some of the other knives that we have seen. It is not a standard folding... Uh, oh boy, I'm having a brain fart here, but a standard style uh, engagement lock that we're used to seeing on a lot of the Shira But uh, it is an inset liner, so... It, uh, you know, it's nice and smooth from a grip standpoint. And one thing that you'll notice on this handle, the level of detail is just through the roof. It's something you're not going to get with, I would argue, probably any other brand right now on the market. There's kind of a few at, at or near this level. And by far, Shira Goroff has such a, such a following and, uh, such great resale value that uh, these special knives when they do come around it's almost a no-brainer if they're in great shape to pounce on them because you're not gonna they're not gonna come around another time especially when you're talking one of 15 one of 30 uh, or the standard stellar custom division one of 50 now with that let's talk ergonomics um, if you have seen my other video on the stellar first production knife, you'll know I like it. You know I really, really like it. So in hand, it's a great fit. You know, like it's just slightly bigger than the Neon. You do get a little bit of stick out, but I feel like on this with the nice curved, voluptuous curves on this knife, you get a little more, uh, you get a little more into the knife with your hand. It kind of feels locked in a little bit more than say the Neon. And uh, it's just, there's just such a nice curve to it. That tab, as you see here for that liner lock, sticks out beautifully. And then the detail on it 
oh my god, hopefully you can see this with uh, the camera if you're watching in 4K, but you can see every last little detail engraved beautifully and, and machined in on that. Oh, it's a work of art in, in the real light. I, I'm assuming the camera's not going to show this very, very well, but you've got this beautiful, beautiful work done on here. It's just, it's just nuts. Um, the blade itself, um, as we show you with this, it's going to really fight the camera's light changing ability here, but, um, you know, Dama Steel's not for everybody. It's uh, certainly beautiful. Um, it looks great, especially when it's limited. And uh, you, it's something you don't see every day. You know, some might say it looks like a gas station knife because of that. But, you know, when it is the real deal, there's something to behold about the look of it compared to, obviously, a gas station knife. Now, this particular model runs on roller bearings, which is silky smooth, as you'd expect. The only difference on these Dama blades is that uh, you need to kind of wear them in a little bit in order to make them su like super silky sm smooth. Now I remember I had a Stellaris um, that in a roundabout way kind of turned into this knife. And um, it had the same same thing when the knife is brand new. You, it feels almost, I don't want to use the word rough, but like you're, you have to kind of wear a track in, a track for the... Uh, the D10 ball. So super smooth and because it is roller bearings you can kind of see it's it's classic Shirogorov. It should be no surprise. Um, as we know with Shirogorov we have their bottom end production which is in most cases everyone else's high end level. You know, single row roll, roll, single row bearings, multi row bearings is step two. They jump into roller bearings on some other models like these. And then on their custom division knives, uh, sorry, full custom knives, they go into uh, double row roller bearings, which uh, I'm a virgin in that regard. I don't know what they feel like, but um, from everything I've been told, um, you know, some prefer roller bearings to them. Others prefer double row roller bearings just because they're a little fancier. It's like having a BMW badge or M series on your BMW. So it's kind of, some like it, some don't, some are indifferent. I'd love to try one. And I imagine at some point I will. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. Um, so I, I will say the handles, they are 3D machined. So most production knives, I'm assuming, would be kind of a 2D machine. So you can get a level of detail on this handle that you just don't see across their production line knives. And I'm kind of rolling the knife here just to kind of show that there's a lot more going on here than you just see if I just slapped a photo of it like this. You know, you look at the different marks and how it's kind of a spread out pattern as each line goes deeper and deeper and longer and longer. You've got milling that starts off thick and then kind of changes direction and goes down thinner and then back up to thick. Like, it's just so cool. The milling around the handle is just tremendous. This, uh, this backspacer... That is also 3D uh, machined, and it's, I believe, anodized titanium blue, and it matches the clip perfectly. And when I look at this clip, you know what, maybe, let's get into that after, but if we look at this backspacer, beautiful, beautifully done, and every angle, it looks different. Honest to God, it just looks different at every angle, and every angle, it looks phenomenal. My God. Um... When we get into this clip, the first thing that I thought of when I saw this clip was Burberry. If you guys uh, guys know, uh, or if your wives shop Burberry, the handbags, the trench coats, etc. They make some ties for men and whatnot, some trenches, but super iconic brand. And they have a, a pattern. And the first thing I thought of when I saw this was Burberry. Because you, you look at the milling, and it's kind of got that pattern to it. And you go, oh, you know, like, oh, there's spacing between the milling lines there and there. It's like, nope, look closer. In between, there's even more micro milling. Um, it's nuts. And if you're in 4K, hopefully you can kind of see that. I'm trying to get as close as I can before the camera freaks out. But there is so much flipping detail on this clip. I wish I could just take this clip off, keep it mint, and, uh, and put it in its own little knife bag because it just looks incredible. Uh, the cutout below the clip as well. You don't need to have that. 
but they're doing it anyway. And not only that, you see like milling work in the cutout. You know, milling lines that are nice and thick right up to the top of the clip. The only concern that uh, I would have with a knife like this in the custom division is these bloody reverse bits. They're kind of annoying because the tools to get them are really, uh, they're harder to come by. So uh, standard Shiro's, as you know, they have this, which is basically a screwdriver. And uh, it's a thick screwdriver, I should say. And with that, you use a standard tool. But uh, with these bits here, it's uh, a reverse screwdriver, so to speak. So it's kind of a, a concave bit that only comes on their custom division tools. So if you want to open this up and work on it and keep it fresh, which I highly encourage you to do, it's not hard to do, um, you need to have a fancy bit. And uh, why don't I... Do I have one here? Yeah. So here's your custom division tool. And uh, all it is... And I'm kind of doing this off the hop, but let's open this guy up. Let's show you what that bit looks like. So you saw it on the knife itself. And let's see what it looks like on the actual tool itself. So there we go. There's your bit. So it just wraps around and, you know, is used as normal. Pretty simple, but also kind of annoying to find the tool. Uh, at certain times. Anyway, hopefully that cut to the point where, uh, let's just cut it to me putting the tool back together. There we go. So there we go. That is the fancy reverse bit tool and is obviously, uh, you know, extremely nice to have uh, if you do want to maintain your knives because why not, right? There are pieces of art, but, uh, you know, as my friend Timothy says, it's always good to, uh, you know, to make it your own and you feel that when you open it up and you clean the bearings, the roller bearings, and you tidy up the inside of the knife, it really feels like it's all of a sudden yours. Speaking of inside the knife, um, I, I shouldn't have to say this at this point, but the inside of these knives are even better than the outside of the knife. Uh, there is so much work going on in here, it is just bananas. There's so much micro milling inside this. And I'm not going to open this one up. Uh, this one's actually going up the door to a, a friend of mine. But uh, it is it is nuts. You know, it's just the kind of thing that you would be blown away. So I'll, I'll leave it at that because I'm not going into it. But uh, hopefully some of these pictures do it justice. Or some of the video, I guess. You can kind of get a peek inside. As I do this, I don't want to drop this. But... Uh, it is absolutely nuts. You get a nice little Shergoroff logo, a little kiss of Shergoroff right on the corner there. Hopefully you can see that. See it right there above my thumb? Um, just nuts. Um, the level of detail on these, both externally and internally, is just incredible. And it's just something you're not going to see anywhere else. Um, you know, I really should, at some point, do a, a breakdown of this. Not this knife, but some of the custom division knives to give you that taste of what uh, what they look like internally because it's just absolutely nuts. Uh, on the, the comfort of the flipper tab, let's, let's get into that because it's just at a different level as well. You can kind of see how it's rolled right at the tip here where it's not on the top, it's not on the side, it's just kind of in between. Oh, it just fires out so easily and so smoothly it's just built for ergos and in the quantum remember the quantum in the f95 is how the quantum it's kind of built into the tab whereas the f95 it's kind of at the top of uh or dropped down from the knife and i'll show you that i've got a couple of them here um just to give you some reference points so f95 and quantum you see where the tab is it's pulled back on the f95 and built into the top of the Quantum series, and they're all in the same spot like this. It doesn't really matter what model, but you can see how that's down, and that one's built into the tip. Well, the Stellar does it just a little different. It's kind of both of them combined. So as you can see, it's kind of built into the tip. You've got a rolled edge, but then it's kind of f 95 in that it's pulled back. So I think that's cool. And just one little detail that, you know, maybe I don't go into a whole lot, but it's just cool. 
And then on the on the Dama side of things, the Dama Steel side, you can see it's right in line with that flipper tab. So all the different angles you look at this tab, you just see all the rolled layers of that steel. You can kind of see it on the side there really well. It just looks so good as you go around. Hopefully you can see it. And then once again, when you're looking down the knife into the into the inside internals of the blade, you can kind of see that as well, all that rolled detail. It's just stunning. You have the optional as well, lanyard hole here. If you want to use it, they've done a good job of blending it in. Some might say it's an eyesore and they'd want it filled in and more of a um, magnetic style to it. I personally like it. On the magnetic, see how they've put the logo on the side here and then they've rolled that little lanyard spot into the back of the 3D milled backspacer. So they've done it here really well. Some people really like that. It hides the eyesore from the side, which I don't really think there's an eyesore. You see it, that's great. I don't think it goes against the design. I think it looks just fine. I don't have an issue with it. But if you do, you know what? It is what it is. It, uh, it's not the end of the world. I personally think that it doesn't detract in value at all because of it or anything like that. Or conversely, if it had that plugged up and a backspacer hanging off of it, well, you know they would extend the blade longer, which would kind of go against uh, some of the characteristics of it. So, not uh, not the end of the world, but if you want to run a, a lanyard, you certainly can, and that's all that you can ask. Now, jimping is one issue that, uh, not issue, but it's, it's an area of discussion. As you can see, the flipper tab is kind of your jimping, although when you look at this, there's a nice kind of soft spot for your finger that falls into the, into the blade here. And it's detail like this, like you, you, it's hard to see on camera, but hopefully I can show you. You can see right at the top here where my finger is, it's kind of depressed down just a little bit and it's smooth, curved, no hot spots. So, you know, on a perfect knife, you know, knife nerdery always mentions this, on a perfect knife, you don't need jimping when it fits your hand. And I'm telling you right now, this fits perfectly. You feel the spot, it's nice and smooth, rounded. It just falls in, and it's and it's enough of a curve that your your hand stays there. Now, if you wanted to choke up and say you wanted jumping further down, that's a different conversation. I don't personally think this knife needs that. And uh, the the actual jumping here, it, it's not intended to be jumping. I don't think. Um, but you know, prove me wrong. Um, it's not needed personally. Uh, up on the blade, you know, so you have these real nice cutouts, which adds to the illusion of it being thinner up, up top, because you have the spine of it that's all super, super thin, and looks amazing. But it's actually, I think, a three and a half mil thick blade. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what it is. Uh, so fairly substantial, still, um, even though it looks a little bit uh, thinner than it is which is fine. And then as I talked about as well, you know, the hardware is all that anodized tie blue, which matches the pivot, the backspacer, and then the hardware elsewhere on the back here, which is kind of buried in. And then I believe, I can't see, but I thought there was another one underneath the clip, or maybe that was on the production. Maybe the production model had something under the clip. I can't see right now. And I see if I can look inside. It's kind of hard to see while I'm doing this on camera. I should have should have prepared, but you know what? If you've made it this far in, you're cool with it. Yeah, so, so the clip is screwed in from the back on the inside, ever so slightly. And then the liner is screwed in on the inside as well, so that's how they do that. Now, the backspacer is screwed in from this side, and then I imagine it's anchored on the other side of the titanium, which is fine. It's not going anywhere. Detent wise, fairly light on this one, but uh, can you feel it? Yeah, it's light, but you can, I don't think you can feel it. Oh, I did there. If you're really trying, you can. Otherwise it hammers out super smooth, reliable, 
lock up is light on these, 10%, but that's how they uh, tend to look, and then they actually curve back on the inside, so you actually have quite a bit of lock face, you're not going to fail it in a test or anything, nor should you be trying that. And then, in terms of ergonomics, that flipper tab, as we were talking about earlier, let's see if I can do it nice and slow, because you've got this nice cutout for your finger to fall into, so as you pull it, your finger ends up inside it, right? Right in there, which is beautiful. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. I'm trying not to hit the cutting board with the blade. There you go. Yep, nice and smooth, ergonomic. An absolute masterpiece. Every detail on this knife is just a step or two up from anything that you'd honestly expect on the market. It's just nutty. Okay, so I've gone through that and then uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about other than detail is the tolerances. So something like this. On the production model, on any other model, you are not going to get that blade that close. <laughs> it's just everything's tighter. Everything's that much more carefully done. The detail on here, this is actually a pretty good angle to show the detail of the milling. It seems the, the light's catching it nicely. But you can kind of see just all that beautifully done. Machining work on the titanium scales. It gets thinner and thicker and then there's milling inside milling. And the inside is no different. There's zero hot spots on this knife. Even with the clip, it just forms inside your hand. It's a nice kind of bill to it, and uh, it's just oh, beautiful. Because most clips on Shiro's, they're kind of angled on the, onto the lock bar for the for the frame lock, whereas this just is a nice smooth bill that touches down into the milled area. And then you even have I'm looking at this now. I'll put the blade in so I don't hurt myself. And then even up behind the clip, they've done some milling to as you pull. Say it's a top of your jeans, so you've got some fabric, some additional fabric. There's even some milling underneath there to provide some additional clearance. Jeez. This thing's nuts. This is just nuts. And this is this right here is like a shining example of a custom division knife. It's just done so well in every sense of the word. Uh, I don't know if you can beat this. I've got uh, two custom division knives coming this week that I'm excited to do videos on. So if you made it this far, I guess this is your Easter egg. But I will have a uh, F95T custom division as well as a pair of mini Quantums coming down the pipe, both regular and sprint run. Uh, so those should be fun to play with and take a look at. Although uh, I may have to get some white gloves and uh, before I even start playing with them because they're just apparently at a whole different level. But that will be it, I think, for me, for the uh, Stellar SR knife from Shira Groff Custom Division. Um, I appreciate you guys if you've made it this far in the video, um, because, I'll be honest, I'm tired even just talking to myself here. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Any questions, leave them below. I, I read every single question and love to converse with fellow knife freaks. Uh, not to be McNeese there, but fellow knife guys, I guess, and uh, and talk about blades, talk about technology, whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm game. Add me on Instagram, bladezilla.ca, uh, or bladezilla.ca. Check out the site, bladezilla.ca, and uh, we will see you next time. Appreciate you stopping by, guys, really do, and we'll talk soon. Cheers. See ya.